Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of the Idle Game Maker tutorial series. In this one we will be talking about buttons. So, buttons are things whose main purpose is to be clicked, usually to produce a resource using an on-click effect. And any type of thing can behave as a button by giving it on-click effects, but buttons, and shinies for that matter, are the only elements that keep track of how many times they've been clicked. And they are of course declared in the button section with a thing key. Alright, now with buttons overviewed, let's talk a little bit about CSS classes which you can use for these buttons to make them look a lot nicer. Now you don't exactly need to know how these CSS classes work at the moment, I will try and explain how they work in the future, but for now just know that CSS classes work as a sort of way to make your game elements look a lot nicer. So buttons have two built-in CSS classes that you can use with them, those are the big button class and the has flares class. Now you append these classes to the class property and you can append multiple CSS classes to any type of thing at the same time. I also provided an example for you. So here we have the button section and a button here. Here is the class property and it actually uses two classes at the same time. You just separate multiple classes with a space in the class property. But let's now actually mention what those classes do. So the big button class enlarges the button size to be 256 by 256 pixels and centers it on the screen. And the has flares class adds decorative flares rotating behind the button. And this class should only be used together with the big button class on a button because otherwise it won't work quite as well. So I have also provided some images here. Here we can see a button without any classes located in its default position above the resources. So it's looking pretty plain and boring. But here we have a button with both the big button class and the has flares class attached. Notice how it's in the center of the screen and these white spots are actually the has flares class which you can't really see rotating right now because this is a static image and not a gif but in your game they will be rotating behind the button making it sort of pop out. Now also however note that this button here also has an icon attached, but don't worry, we'll attach icons in episode 8, so the next one. Let's now talk about on-click animations. Now, these actually aren't specific to buttons, but they can be used on every single type of thing in your game. But I still wanted to mention them since they are used with the on-click property, or effect, sorry. You can use anim CSS class with an on-click effect to add some flavor to your clicking. And built-in CSS animations in IGM include on-click anim glow, and this makes the thing pulse white after being clicked, and on-click anim wobble, and this makes the thing wobble after being clicked. Now it is also important to mention that you can use anim icon CSS class in the same way, but the animation will only be applied to the thing's icon. So, for example, if you added an icon right here, so you would have on-click anim icon wobble, that would only make the thing's icon wobble after being clicked. Hopefully that makes sense. Now it's also pretty important to mention that you can also create your own custom animations. However, this requires some CSS knowledge. Now, the only thing left to cover are the unique properties of buttons and there are actually only two, so there really isn't that much to say about them. Only thing I would kind of add here is that this property is in brackets, so you should use it in math expressions. Alright, so with buttons covered, I have actually prepared an optional challenge for you. So, your tasks for this challenge are to add a button to the game, have it produce coins, and to give it the big button and the has flares class. Now, if you do this properly, it will look a little bit weird without an icon, but don't worry, we'll add one in the next episode. I have also prepared a few hints for you if you become stuck at any point. So, pause the video right now, give it a go, and if you are stuck, feel free to come back here for a hint. Okay, so your first hint is to make sure to declare a new button in the button section with a thing key. Your second hint is to use the on click effect to yield one coin. And your third hint is to append classes to the class property. Okay, hopefully you have given that a go. Let me know how it went in the comments. Now I will move on to actually completing this challenge and adding code to our game. Let's get into it. Alright, so we need to add a button to our game, so let's first begin by adding the buttons section, then a thing key, let's have our buttons thing key just be coin button, then we need to have it produce coins, so let's add the on click effect and have it yield one coin every click. Now we need to add the following classes, so big button and has flares. You don't really need a name because in the future it will not be showing any kind of description or any tooltip at all, because it just sort of gets in the way. So let's save our changes. 
Yep, get into our game, hit refresh. And there we go. Now at the moment the button looks a little bit weird because it doesn't have an icon attached but don't worry in the next episode we'll definitely attach an icon. Let's now check if it actually works so let's click it a few times. Alright we're getting coins. Let's now get to 40 so we can buy a metal detector. Alright we're at 40. Let's buy a metal detector. We're gaining one coin every second and our metal detector has increased in price. And we also have the option to manually click the button to get more coins. So we already kind of have a game loop and we are making really, really good progress. All right, that should be the end of this episode. In the next one, we will be assigning icons into all of the elements we have here, making our game look a lot nicer. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you really enjoy what I do here, feel free to check out my Patreon for only $2 a month. I can shout you out at the end of my videos. All right, that's all I have to say. And I'll see you in the next episode.